Welcome to the Tough Decisions Network for Entrepreneurs. I'm Dan Hanford, and my wife, Danae, and I interview successful people sharing stories behind tough decisions that they've had to make along their journey as an entrepreneur. On the podcast with us today is Madeline Lambert. Madeline, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Well, Madeline, I want you to get us started and talk to us a little bit about you and yourself and your background and maybe share something interesting about you as well. Yeah, sounds great. So my name is Madeline Lambert. I am the CEO of Content Refined, which is a content marketing agency up here located in, in Canada. And uh, yeah, I guess my, my background, I, I became an entrepreneur about two and a half years ago. And prior to that, I'd been working in the medical technology field. So that's what kind of got me into technology and into entrepreneurship. And then, yeah, started my own thing about two and a half years ago. So here we are today. And something interesting about myself. Oh, well, I just had a baby back. Congratulations. In, thank you. Thank you. Back in July. So I'm uh, just back from my maternity leave, actually. And yeah, so that was, that's an exciting big moment in my life. I had a son. His name's Ethan and he's great. Awesome. Awesome. Well, tell me a little bit more about your business because it sounds interesting and I've never heard anybody kind of express it that way. So you know, it's an article. What did you mention to about, say it was again? It's a content marketing agency. So Content we, marketing agency. Okay. Yeah. And what does a content marketing agency consist of and what do they do? And what's their kind of core focus? Yeah. So our bread and butter is creating really, really great quality online content that will predictably rank on search engines. So if you have a business or if you have a website that you would like more traffic to, one of those methods that you would probably look into would be content marketing. So that means blog writing, like article writing. It means um, like social media. It means video, like video marketing, but our sort of bread and butter is definitely the blog writing aspect of it. So what we've done is we've, we've used a ton of like off the shelf content marketing tools to do a bunch of different like data analysis studies on what are the driving factors that make online content rank on search engines. And so we've compiled that data and we've essentially started creating content by a certain set of rules that will help us create content that will predictably rank on search engines. What would you say are your like, like core clients? Like what kind of industry are those clients in? Yeah, that's a great question. So we have two sort of personas per se for our ideal client. So ideal client number one is uh, somebody who like owns a bunch of different like affiliate websites. So there's a market for people who, who own businesses online who just need like great quality, consistent content creation to keep their traffic up for their websites. So these are people who maybe own like five to 10 small online businesses that just need to outsource that content piece. And that's sort of, yeah, that's our bread and butter for that kind of client. Second persona is we work directly with people who um, are actually hired by like an agency um, or, or a company who have the title of like marketing director. So they, it's their job to do all of the marketing for their business. And so the content piece is something that they're looking to outsource. So marketing managers are sort of our, our second big client. Well, that's interesting. And I'm sure that along this process of, of starting this business, that there's been some tough decisions that you've had to make along the way. And so we're going to dive into a couple of those. And the first one that I'd like to start with is, is, is one that I call a sore thumb tough decision. So it's a tough decision that you had to make that had a really, it was really tough to try to make those decisions, but it had a really bad outcome. So can you describe that first one and maybe talk about some of the lessons that you learned through that one? Yeah, for sure. So tough decisions that that had a bad outcome. So the one that's sort of screaming out to me right now was a decision that I made early on in the business when it came to like images. So I was trying to sort of like cut corners with um, images that we were using for somebody's, somebody's blog. And I couldn't find on like the, the stock image websites that we purchase, um, I couldn't find an image that matched this person's article. So I instructed one of my, you know, virtual assistants to go find one on the internet and sort of steal it, I guess. And that was a tough decision because it went against our policies and SOPs. 
and the outcome was really bad because our client ended up um, ended up having a big issue with that, and we actually lost the client over it. So big mistake, but it was out of like a desire to do something great for the client, but the outcome wasn't so great. So don't cut corners. <laughs> What are some things that you've put into place now that kind of make sure that that doesn't happen in the future for your business? Oh, oh, yeah. We have like very, very clear guidelines as to what images we can and cannot use for clients and for their projects. So that was, that was a tough pill to swallow and it, it sucked, and, but we learned from it. And I always say that like our best policies and our best procedures um, come from our biggest mistakes. Absolutely. And with this particular mistake, I'm sure that, you know, even working with the client and making sure that, that what their, you know, goals are and visions for, you know, having the content that they're wanting, you know, strengthened, was, was strengthened as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I know that, uh, you know, a lot, there's a lot of, you know, people out there that are trying to do, you know, some sort of content strategy, but to really try to hone in on those clients and making sure that, you know, they really are provided what they're really looking for and they're not, you know, you know, utilizing images and, you know, content that's not being repurposed and stuff like that is important exactly, too. Exactly, which is tough, you know, and like you want to, your whole goal as a content marketing agency is to, you know, produce stuff that's really, really valuable to people and that, that has some like legitimacy around it as well. And so when you, when you cut corners and make, make bad decisions, you, yeah, it can really hurt you and your reputation and it's just not, not, not good. Now, do you guys use um, a lot of virtual assistants in your agency? I do. Yeah. So I, the way that we've sort of modeled our agency is that as we've grown, we've created different teams. So um, I, I call it the team pod strategy. So essentially it started with just me and I had a virtual assistant. I had a writer. And then as the team got bigger, I had several writers. I had several virtual assistants. And then as capacity got sort of, it got sort of stretched and I, I, didn't really have the capacity to take on more clients. Then I hired a new project manager. That project manager hired a writer. That project manager hired a virtual assistant and then built out their team in the same fashion that I had. And then once that project manager's capacity hit a point where she couldn't take on more clients, then we hired another. So now we're at the point where we have that model across four different teams. And where are most of your writers or virtual assistants located? Yeah, so my project managers, I have I have one of them in house. So there's two in, two in house, including myself, and then we have two that are working. Or sorry, no, we have three that are working remote. Sorry about that. So we have five in total, five teams in total, and then our virtual assistants um, are scattered across across the world, and our writers are located in North America. Awesome. Let's shift a little bit here and talk about a different tough decision that you've had to make as an entrepreneur in this business and, and talk about one that I like to call the, the more positive one that had a really good and positive outcome and, and some of the lessons you learned through that one. Yeah, absolutely. So for this one, I have a really, really great one. So early, again, early on in the business, I was having a, a problem where I couldn't say with absolute certainty that every piece of content that I would get back would be good quality. And that's because we use writers that are contractors. And by virtue of, of having online contractors, you're going to have a certain amount of flakiness in your business if, mm -hmm. um, if you don't put like systems in place to control that. So I was getting to a point of, of pretty significant frustration where people would ghost me, people wouldn't submit their stuff on time. People would like plagiarize sometimes, you know, it was just like not, I knew that I could not build a significant business off of this model. So I needed to put some systems in place to, to really make sure that quality was going to be the, the output. Um, and so we came up with a system and it's followed to this day and it will continue to be followed that we basically get rid of the bottom 10% of all of our writers every single month. And, and they're all aware of that. They know that that's part of our systems. And so it just really makes sure that uh, that quality is always on the forefront of whatever we're producing. And all of our writers know that if they're late with their assignments or if they even think about plagiarizing or 
you know, if they, if they try to cut corners and, and do a crappy job, they're going to get a point against them. And then at the end of the month, when we do our, our review for all of our contractors, that they might be on the out. And so it really created a system that allows us to continually produce high quality content with, with serious contractors. So when you first hire one of these riders, is that something that you do in the onboarding process or do you tell them that before you even hire them? Absolutely. It's part of, it's part of everything they do when, they, when they're onboarded. So what we do is we hire about five riders at the same time. We give them all a test round of articles and we usually hire one out of the five and then they're put onto the roster and there's essentially like a, like a point system. And if they, yeah, if they have the most points by the end of the month, then they're out. When you're doing these test articles with these five riders, these are obviously before you hire them. Are you paying them to write those articles or just like, hey, as an yeah, application to be able to do it, are you just, okay, so you are actually paying them for those test rounds? Yeah, of course. And is it at a lower rate than you would normally pay them because it's just a test? No, nope. it's, uh, it's at the full rate. We will repurpose those like test articles for like my business partner has a ton of like online affiliate sites and we'll repurpose those test articles at some point or another for, to our advantage. But um, no, it's part of, it's part of our budget and it's part of our, uh, just the way we do things. And how many writers do you guys have at any given time? We have about 70 writers right now. Wow. So you're getting rid of seven, seven a month and then you're having to test like in order to hire seven, you're going to be testing 35 people a month just to get the top people. Yep. Yeah, it's quite the system. And yeah. Uh, yeah, it's part of our budget. And it's like, it is the most important piece of our business, right? So we're going to invest a lot of time and energy into making sure that we have the right people. So how many articles does each writer put out every month? That varies. It depends like what kind of projects they're working on. It depends what kind of writer they are. So we have a like a tiered system in terms of what what kind of writer they are. So if they're like a technical writer, that's going to be a different volume and a different budget. If they're just like, if they're sort of just like the standard writer, they're probably going to be able to pump out between five to 10 articles per week um, per writer. Wow. That's, that's yeah. a lot. I'm just in there like doing the math in my head. You must have the, definitely the systems in place to be able to run this, like five different teams, 70 writers, you know, interviewing them on, a, on at least 35 a month to get those, those, those seven every month that you're going to be getting rid of seven, you know, yeah. I'm sure you're growing. So you got to hire even more than that. Yeah. We've got, we've got yeah. our systems in place and like our, our project management team, that's sort of the fore, forefront of what they do. Like they're obviously client facing, but they are always recruiting. And are you typically paying them per article or are you paying them like by the word or how do you guys usually structure that with your writers? Yeah, we're paying them per article, which is usually by like per 1000 words. Okay. So you basically say, all right, here's a here's a thousand word article. Here's the topic go, you know, yeah. and they, they write the article, send it back to their project manager. And is the, the, the project manager I'm assuming is probably doing the final editing on it and kind doing of a lot of the editing. Yeah. Project. We have a few editors like on staff as well, but we do ask like at the end of the day, the pr- like end product is always the project manager's responsibility. Mm-hmm. Now, are those, those writers also responsible for putting images associated with their articles or is it just no. the writing piece? Uh, no, it's just the writing piece. And then we have a publishing team and the publishers are the ones who, who go in and, and put the final images and actually upload the articles onto the client's website for them. All and right. so then, then they'll input all the images, they'll do all of the tags, they'll do all of the um, like affiliate links if they need to, they'll do all this like CTAs, all of that stuff. What are some strategies that you like to do when you face a tough decision in business? Oh, I like to talk it out with my business partner Mm -hmm. (laughs) and uh, he's, he's very experienced and he usually has some good input. I also like to um, book a meeting with my business coach. I have a business coach who is fantastic and who has always who always has like my best interest in mind and my business's best interest in mind. So he's very, and he's like a a bit of a third party. So he doesn't have, he's unbiased, which is always great. And I usually sit on a decision for at least a day before I make any big decisions because I am, I, 
have traditionally been a pretty impulsive person and that doesn't always lead to, to good decisions. So I usually try to sit on it for, for a good 24 hours before I make any, yeah, knee jerk decisions. Well, we're gonna take a quick break here. And when we come back, we're gonna be talking to you about a series of quick questions and answers that we call the trifecta. So we'll be right back. Have you ever thought about investing in real estate, but find yourself so busy that you don't have time for it? Do you have FOMO, which is the fear of missing out? At HanfordCapital.com, we help investors with passive real estate investments that project better returns than traditional investment vehicles, such as the stock market. If you'd like to find out more about our passive real estate investments, visit HanfordCapital.com. That's H-A-N-D-F-O-R-D Capital.com. We will jump on a call with you to discuss your investment goals and to see if our investments are a good fit for you. This advertisement is not to be construed as an offer or recommendation to buy or sell a security. Visit HanfordCapital.com. And we are back with Madeline Lambert. Madeline, I want you to get us started on this segment that we call the trifecta by telling us about first your favorite technology that you use in business that helps make your life easier every day. Active campaign. It's an email marketing uh, platform. And yeah, it just helps automate our email marketing. And what is a favorite quote that you've heard that has helped you as an entrepreneur? Invest in people who invest in you. And what about a favorite book that has helped you make better decisions as an entrepreneur? Oh, how to run your business without your business running you. And it's an entrepreneur's guide to keeping your shit together. That is awesome. Yeah. How to run your business without your business running you. Yes, it's amazing. It's written by a clinical psychologist who basically did a study on her husband, who was the um, who was the like founder and owner of um, of Drip, the email um, the email mm-hmm. marketing platform. So she basically used him as as her like as her case study, and yeah, it was it's a really powerful book. What's the next thing for you right now on your vision or dream board? Ooh, next thing for me, growing the crap out of my business. <laughs> you have already done that, Madeline. I can't <laughs> wait to see how you continue to grow and continue to you know, expand from where you currently are. I know you have a special that you wanted to talk about as well of what our listeners can do if they wanted to reach out to you and maybe you know, have you do some of their content marketing. So I'll let you uh, share that with us right now as well. Yeah, for sure. So we have like our company is basically based off of very, very robust policies, SOPs, like standard operating procedures. And part of those is like every single article is written by a a guide, essentially. So we have all sorts of different templates for different types of articles. And I'm willing to share those with your audience um, if they want them. So I'll put the link in the uh, in the show notes. And also if anybody is interested in outsourcing some of their content, but don't want to like fully commit to the full price, I'm willing to give 20% off of month one for anybody who wants to try out the service. Awesome. Awesome. And we'll put the links in the show notes, like you mentioned, and that way everybody can have access to it to, you know, choose on those, get those links. And then do you have a website that they can go to, to find out more information as well? Yes, absolutely. It's contentrefined.com. And you can, yeah, and you can always email me directly at Maddie, M-E-D-D-I-E, at contentrefined.com. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you taking some time, Madeline, to be on the podcast with us today and kind of sharing some of the tough decisions that you've had to face and also sharing that with our listeners about the content marketing stuff that you're doing. It seems like you guys are doing it on a very high level. Looking forward to continuing to follow you as you continue to grow as an entrepreneur and looking forward to having you on a future episode as well. Thank you. And likewise, we'll chat soon. Thank you for listening to the Tough Decisions Network. Be sure to visit toughdecisions.net to gain access to show notes for this episode and to join our free weekly entrepreneur email where we will send you news about the latest technology for your business, inspiring quotes, and the latest books for entrepreneurs. That's toughdecisions.net.